Uh, g'day guys, it's Joe from League Fit Academy here. I have just been instructed that I haven't introduced Chris. <laughs> so I introduced myself, that's not very helpful. So this is Chris from League Fit Academy, I'm Joe. Uh, today we have a return questioner asking us about playing fullback. We'll be delving in, into confidence in tackling, which we actually talked about a little bit on the last episode. And we'll be talking about how quickly you can safely lose fat. So welcome to episode nine of Run It Straight. Need a drink of water. I'm just talking a lot. Talking very fast. Am I? Maybe the coffee. The, the <laughs> maybe the coffee is just sunk in. Our first question comes to us via Instagram. It's actually more of a follow-up question, as we answered one of his questions back in episode five. Hey guys, you answered my question last time, which was really helpful and helped a lot. However, another problem has arisen, so I thought I'd ask you guys again. Anyway, my question is that I've been playing center, doing well, and now the coach wants to move me to fullback, and I was wondering what are the key attributes a fullback should have. I train three days a week, play one game on the weekend, and play other random sports during the week with mates, and I play under 14s. Um, before we answer that question, just a little thing. Um, back up here in the first paragraph, you said another problem has arisen. Just a little quick tip, from now on, never use the word problem, just use the word challenge, okay? When you say problem, it automatically, your brain triggers, oh, this is a problem, it's hard, it's hard to fix, what am I gonna do, panic modes. Say challenge, and it's something that you can look at and you can take on, so this is just a little Joe nitpicky thingy, okay? So, no more problems, only challenges, all right? Um, all right, uh, so, back to the question, what, uh, what are the attributes a fullback should have? Chris. Uh, yeah, uh Definitely not a problem. Uh, it's good to get experience in different positions. Well done, by the way. I'm playing well and getting it, yeah, well, getting stuff. shifted to fullback. We're really happy that we could help you on that front. Um, but yeah, it's it's never a negative if your coach wants to put you to another position. Obviously, it means more experience for you. Um, and I'm guessing uh, fullback uh, means you're going to get more involved in the in the play. So that's that's a good thing. So what does that mean? So something that he's looking. To no, but if you're going to get more involved, uh, what does that mean? He's going to need to be more fit. Fit. Yeah. So this is a really big one, is you have to get really, really fit. Uh, fullback cover more distance than anyone else in the field. Yep. Um, Major difference to, between the centre and fullback that yep. you're, you're talking about right now. Um, so you have the agility, you have the strength. Fitness is definitely one of those. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be covering a lot more metres than a, a centre would. But also um, catching high balls and communicating with your team. So your defensive line, uh, as well as knowing where to be in attack. Um, so just touching on that. Oh, and knowing where you need to be in defense. There's a lot of knowing where yeah. you need to be. Well, communication, he talked about. You have to direct and you have to fill the holes. You have to tell people, like, if it's, if it's the fourth or the fifth, you, have, you might tell your open side winger to fall back, uh, to fall back, to fall, to, to fall back, um, to help cover the other side for a long kick. You need to be the one telling people to move across and fill gaps occasionally. You might need to push up into the line yourself if, if, if there's been a half, a half break or something in one side's week. Um, urgency in anticipation I think what you were talking about is knowing where to be is anticipation yeah. now uh, what I would say to you is do not rely on speed to get you in or out of a, uh, a situation use anticipation so doesn't mean that you can't have speed like if you look at um, uh, let me think well, let's say you look at Tedesco or Billy Slater we'll, couple, Slater. we'll, we'll use them a couple yeah. of times yeah. speed up to absolute burn mm. but still doesn't sit there and wait for the kick, whereas you would say, got nothing against him, fantastic player, but back in the day, Jared Hayne, when he was in his prime, he was lazy in getting across. He'd rely, he'd know that whenever, if they kick the ball there, I'm quick enough that I'll just push my body to get across and get in that spot. Whereas someone like Slater, or these days, uh, Tedesco, who I think is definitely the heir apparent. They hardly let a ball bounce. Yeah, they hardly let a ball bounce. They're anticipating, so they've watched a lot of film, this and that, and they also know, like, oh, I need to be there. Where's the game moving? Where's the half? Where's the 5 8? Where are they more than likely to kick it? So they're anticipating where that ball's going to be at the same time that they're communicating to everyone else. Okay, so. Urgency and anticipation. Urgency, I think we mentioned this last week when we were talking about the winger because there's obviously some similar things between wing play and fullback play. Don't just jog back. Push yourself, so use whatever speed that you do have. Combine that with uh, anticipation to be in the right place at the right time. 
um, and do everything at full pace. Like you look at Slater, he, he, he was never going slow. You look at Tedesco, who, like I said, has now taken over the mantle as the best fullback in the game. Nothing's ever done at half pace. It's always 100%. Um, we talked about this, work ethic. They're probably the two best fullbacks the last 10 years. They're involved in everything. Whether it's hanging around off an inside ball, um, if it was Kronk, well, actually, it's funny because now it's Kronk at a different club, mm. or um, Kiri. They're always, if, if it's a half break, they're always there. If, if, like, it's very rarely that you'll see anything happen, let's say Tedesco at the Roosters, and he isn't within 10 metres. Anytime there's a try scored, if it's not him scoring it, he was the one setting up the break or he's there in support. So that's something that you do need to keep in mind is your work ethic needs to be, these guys cover more metres, they're the fittest guys on the field. Okay, you need to be around everything. So this is good, you get more of a chance to, um, to get involved in the game, work on your fitness. Um, ball handling. Mm -hmm. Arguably after a... Um, a dummy half, they probably handle the ball more than anyone else. Usually every set of six, they're going to get it. Most sets of six, they're going to handle it from the kick. Then well, whether they don't, if they don't get it from the kick, they're going to get it from a scoot or they're going to get it from a, um, like a hit up, just, just uh, taking the ball back upfield after a kick. Usually they're used as a second 5'8 in the attacking line, so coming around the back. So if you can't pass both ways, you need to learn. You need to learn to do that. Yep. Because these days with split halves, Usually the 5-8 the plays what was a traditionally a 5-8's um, a role, which is a, a second receiver. So if you're playing on the right-hand side, you could have the halfback who, who the right side of the field is his. The 5-8 may be playing on the left side of the field. It's usually the fullback that's swinging around to make that extra ball player. So you do need to be able to par par pass both ways, and you do need to be able to have a long ball, because oftentimes you may need to be cutting out a back rower to hit a center, or a back rower and a center to hit a winger, which is often one of the most common plays. Um, we have a helicopter going yeah. But Which is what we said, so if the defense is good, if the center goes up and the winger goes up with him, you're going to have to throw that long ball yep. uh, to score that try, yeah, and it has to be a good long <laughs> We ball. mentioned this last week, from yeah. the other point of view, when we were talking about a winger defending with his center and jamming in, right. and putting the pressure on the fullback, now if you're in that position, the pressure's on you, so you need to be able to throw a long ball to cut out those two players and hit your winger. Usually and, without much time as well. Yeah, you don't have much time and you need to be able to do it at pace. So look, it's fine for you to stand there and we, we get our guys to do this um, to start with all the time is a standing pass of, of 10 or 15 meters and, and being able to hit a mark is brilliant. There's nothing wrong with that and that's where you need to start. Then you need to progress into doing it jogging and then at full speed because oftentimes if you're getting a ball from a fullback, you're going to be, you might not be at full speed, but you're definitely accelerating as hard as you can and you might only have two or three steps before you, can throw, before you need to throw that ball. So you need to work on your long ball. Um, anything else on the ball handling? No, support play. You've got to be around it. We've talked about this. Um, we talked about Tedesco and Slater. Mm. If there's a break in the middle, oftentimes, most times I would say, if you get a front row who gets an arm free and there's a line break, it's either the hooker that he passes it onto or it's the fullback because the fullback's free to roam around that middle area. So you really need to be getting involved in everything else, in everything that's going on around the ball. You had something? No. no. Um, uh, tackle technique. You are the last line of defense. If you can't tackle, that's a problem. You didn't mention this in your question, but... We'll run through it anyway. You need to work on one-on-one -on -one tackling, okay? And more often than not, this is, this is going to be cutting tackling. It's a different story when you're on your own line and you need to go for that ball. And forget about tackling the person, just tackle the ball. Go all in around the ball, get your chest around the ball, wrap your arms around the ball. It doesn't matter where the person falls, as long as you're between them and the ground, you go for that ball. Anywhere else on the field, go for their legs. It's the old traditional tackle. Don't try and tackle them up high. Go around the legs and bring them down. If they've got a support player, do not go for the intercept. Do not go for the intercept. Force them to make the pass. If you, look, if he's got a support player and, and you beeline just for the, um, for, the, for the ball carrier, he's going to be forced to make the pass. If he's rose the pass, what, probably 15% of the time these days, he'll throw a forward pass. Yeah. yeah, it happens quite a lot. You're like, oh, we've blown another try. You first see it. First graders stuff it yeah, up. Yeah, first graders stuff it up all the time. So at any level below that, it's probably going to be 30 or 40% of the time you can save the try if you simply make him make a decision to pass the ball. He could throw it forward. The guy could, um, could knock on. Or maybe whoever the support player is could get pulled down by someone else. But if you go for the intercept or if you try to fake him out and go for the support player, it's very easy for this guy to, to, to just go himself and score. Make him make the decision. Because the more things, that, the more steps that they have to take, the more likely they're gonna make a mistake. So, uh, go for the man, don't go for the intercept, that's number one. You need to work on your tackle technique with both shoulders, number two. Third, put him on a shoulder. What does that mean? Put him. Put him on a shoulder. 
I don't know, you told me. Well, maybe you go, oh, all right, all right. You probably know a different language. So essentially give him a, a alleyway to run down. Don't just come directly at the guy. Get on one shoulder. So the direction that he has to run is clear and it's obvious and he's not going to, because if you run at him and he runs at you, chances are if you're directly at one another, he's going to step you. Any, any little amount of footwork and it's very easy to beat someone. If you, if you put him on a shoulder, you give him an alleyway to run down, it's going to take a tremendous amount of, of, of change of direction ability, sidestep, to get on your other side. Give him an alleyway and push him one direction. So that's the only way he can go. A lot of times when you see a fullback miss, it's because it is one-on-one. Um, saw this a couple of weeks ago in the Anzac Day game um, when Matt Dufty scored that try. And Tedesco, just talking about who was the best defender, but he got caught because he was in, he, he was running, uh, Dufty was running directly at him. And Dufty's very good with his footwork. So left, right, left, right. Tedesco couldn't track him that well. Whereas if... Tedesco had run up on the left and given him, given him an alleyway, he could have put him on his shoulder. Now, I know in this case, Tedesco is probably thinking Duffy's quicker than him, which is probably yeah. the truth. Short, 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 short yeah, distance, yeah, yeah, yeah. acceleration wise. Um, but you need to put them on a shoulder so they only have one direction to go. That way you're not going to be stepped and you can just focus on the tackle. Tackle down low. Most of the time when fullbacks get pushed off, it's usually because they're going in from the waist up and they yep. get palmed off. So yep. if you go from the waist down, you go around his knees, he can't reach you with his palm. It's useless. So really just line him up. I've seen massive guys get dropped by tiny little fullbacks. They just go in the legs. It's really not that difficult. Um, anything else on, on, on tackle technique? No? Um, yeah, if it's one-on-one tackling, uh, if someone's made a break um, if, and they have support straight away, instead of rushing them, if there's enough room uh, before the try line, you could turn and backpedal and hope that your centre or winger can uh, help you. So basically, they can mark up and then you can make a tackle. You do see that in first grade. And then, look, they'll give them an alley, but they won't try and close it down. Is They'll try and, if they're front on, they'll move onto a shoulder so that this guy's trying to move in a certain direction, but they won't jam in straight away as long as they know they've got the pace to cover that person so they won't get around them. They'll delay it long enough so that some of those so the, the other defenders can actually catch up and get in the way of the support. You do see that happen yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. So summarising all of this, communication, urgency and anticipation. Develop a ridiculous work ethic because you're going to need it. Work on your uh, ball handling, support play. Um, what else? Physical prep we talked about, which it goes without saying. Um, you know, your strength, your power, uh, conditioning, speed work, flexibility, mobility. Um, get your tackle technique right. I think that was everything. Yep. Okay. Next question. And last question because it's like a two-parter thing. Uh, comes to us again via Instagram. Hello, can I have some help? It's my first year playing footy and I want to be a better tackler. At training, I'm really good, but when it comes to games, I kind of freeze and I get scared. I'm one of the biggest kids in my team and I want to learn how to make tackles on the other team's big kids, the kids that everyone's scared of. And another goal is to lose 12 kilos and gain muscle, but also gain speed. How do I do that easily and quick? We'll address that little part afterwards, the first part. Um... Uh, we, we, I freeze, get scared, tackling in games. We addressed that actually recently. One of the boys in the academy um, came to us with uh, some similar, similar questions. Uh, basically how we answered that for him was we got someone to practice with him so, uh, and we explained to him a drill that he could, um, that he could do. Yep. So it wasn't so confronting um, and it's not something that you have to just overpower the person. But basically if you get someone to run uh, directly at you, we'll, we'll start off walking until you get the tackle technique right. Um, and there's a certain way that you do it. You just drop your shoulder into them and fall backwards, but just try to land on top of them. So if you do that, practice that uh, walking, then jogging, and then uh, you can get the person to sprint at you. So this person obviously needs to be willing to do it. Yeah. If you can get someone similar size to you then, um, or bigger, that's even better. That's so look, number one, get someone to practice with. I think um, uh, the, the fellow you're talking about, he had his cousin. And That's he said, right. And he said, yep. yeah, look, we, we muck around after we go down the park and kick the footy around most days after school. And we said, that, so that's brilliant. So it's simply for the stage one, you're just starting on your knees and the person just walks very slowly to you. You just think uh, face cheek to bum cheek, wrap your arms around and roll over to the side on the side that that person is. So if you grab them with your right shoulder, you're going to go over to the right and you land on top of them. We call it the wrap and roll. Okay, it's a really simple, if you have a look online, you'll find there's a ton of drills. We do it kneeling with, with the outside leg up. So my left leg's up, my right shoulder is the one I'm tackling with. He simply just walks straight towards me, wrap cheek to cheek, fall over on top of him. And then you get them to do it at increasing speeds until essentially they're running full pelt. Then you do the same thing from the standing position. Get down in that position under 12s. You still want to be tackling between chest and between the waist. That's where you're looking for, around the hip area. 
you're just going to need to practice it over and over and over until it becomes second nature. Look, with, with tackling, uh, you see some kids in under a few, he's usually one in every team, in like under fives or under sixes. There's one kid who's tackling everyone, and then most of the other boys just come over and, and flop on top. By the time you get to under eights or under nines, if you've got a team of, of, of 12 kids, there's probably maybe three that can actually tackle properly. Yeah. There's another three that'll run in and help when someone's made first contact, and everyone else is kind of useless. They're just sort of uh, targets. By the time you get to the age that you're at, probably half the boys in a side can tackle fairly well. Uh, and, and there's kids that play football for two, three, four years, and just because they haven't done enough reps of it, like, don't use tackling. Tackling bags aren't really useful. You need to be tackling a person. Uh, but some people will get it after 15 tackles. Some people, it'll literally take 100. I remember when I started playing footy, I sucked for like six years. And then at some point, you're starting to, oh, okay, I'm getting this now, I'm getting this now. And you start to get that, comfort to get that confidence and to become comfortable with it. We talked, I think it was in the last episode, about people doing like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and wrestling and contact. It sounds like you might need to do some of that. You need to get used to so that you're not scared and you don't freeze up. It just needs to be something that you're doing on a regular basis. We spoke a couple of episodes about how, a couple of episodes ago about how to build confidence. And you have confidence when you know you've done something before and you can do it again. If, you, if you're at training and you do 30 tackles on your right shoulder and 30 tackles on your left shoulder, that's much better than doing two or three, which is typically what most people do against another person. You gotta get out there and you just gotta do the reps. Just rep after rep after rep. Some people get it after five reps. Some people it takes 50. Some people it takes 500. But I've seen some guys who just were absolutely terrible um, defensively in the space of six months because they just practice and practice over and over and over again, get to you know an eight or a nine out of 10 as far as their tackling ability goes. Um, yeah, anything yeah. else? No. Okay, second part of the question. Um, also, another goal is to lose 12 kilos and gain muscle, but also gain speed. How do I do that easily and quick? <laughs> well, it's not gonna be easy and it's not gonna be quick. It is simple though, but simple doesn't mean easy. Um, all right, what happens if you try and lose weight too quickly? You will burn muscle tissue. You're gonna burn muscle tissue. If you, you, look, you burn muscle tissue, you're gonna get weaker, so you're gonna lose strength, you're gonna lose power, and you're gonna lose speed as well. So put the quick thing to the side. That 12 kilos, I mean, what is it now? It's, it's, it's the middle of May. You've probably got, what, 10 games left this season? I'm guessing because I think it's, they've just had round five last week, and so most of the comps have got 10 games and then maybe semis. That 12 kilos, realistically, you're not gonna lose all of that probably if you start now and you start doing the right things you're doing now. That's not gonna be gone until the end of the season. Doesn't mean that you don't need to start because if you don't start now, you're not gonna get to that point at the end, right? So it's all well and good. We need to lose that weight. And you'll see, if once you've lost two or three kilos, you'll already see it on the field, you'll be a bit quicker and your fitness will improve because you're not carrying around as much useless weight. You know, there's an old saying, you can't flex fat, right? Um, so it doesn't do you any good on the field. And when it's gone, you're gonna, your fitness is going to last a lot longer. You're going to be able to play more minutes. You'll do more when you're on the field. Your change of direction will improve because you won't have as much mass to decelerate and then reaccelerate. Um, accelerate. Uh, everything's going to get better. But just keep in mind, because it seems that you're, you're looking for easy and quick, there isn't an easy or a quick fix, um, aside from dysentery, but I won't go there. Uh, so you're going to have to start tracking your food. We talked about this. This was... Gee, what, what episode was it, Nikki? What episode did we film? Did we talk about my fitness pal? Six or seven. So one of the ones that's going to be going up soon because we've got a few in the can that'll be coming up over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. By the, so by the time you see this, it'll already have happened. So you know, I'm. Yeah, that's it's kind of like a time travel thing, Avengers ish. Uh, <laughs> you're going to need to start tracking your food. You're going to need to create a deficit of around about 500 to 550 cows a day. What's, what's the, the amount of weight that you could lose? So what's the general it's, recommendation? It's about uh, six to 800 grams is healthy yeah, yeah, they, without they gen losing any muscle Look, tissue. we don't know how big you actually are, yeah. but the old adage of half a kilo to a kilo that you see pop up and, you know, in the news and whatnot, it is kind of right. It's gonna be somewhere in that realm. Um, it just depends how big you are. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you wanna lose, say, half a kilo a week, you're gonna to need to create a daily deficit of around about 500 calories, um, 550 calories, which is 3,800 over a week, which is half a kilogram of body fat. Um, remember, when, you, when you're looking to lose weight, I know that you are young, I would recommend going to see a, uh, a strength coach and getting a resistance training program because we want you to hang on to 
um, as much of your muscle mass as you can. Even at your age, we've talked about this before as well, you can perform a proper structured resistance training under supervision by someone who knows what they're doing. Even if they do end up giving you stuff to do at home, if it's, if it's a variation of put up push-ups and lunges and squats, and maybe there's something at home that you can use to do like an inverted row or a pull-up or something along those sorts of lines, stimulate the muscle somehow, that's gonna mean that the weight that you are losing less of it is gonna be of lean tissue. Uh, you do need to try to get two grams of protein per kilo of body weight. But again, the big thing that I would say to you is easily and quick. It's not easy, it's not quick, but it is simple. Uh, your conditioning work, your cardio training is probably where you're gonna get half your calorie deficit from, the other half you'll get from your nutrition and from your food. So step one, download the app. Step two, find out how much you're eating. Next thing that you need to do is you need to create a deficit of around about 500 a day. Uh, you could probably get half from food and half from extra training, so some conditioning, and that might be what, a 15 or a 20 minute jog? Yeah. Um, depending, again, how big you are. Uh, and how hard, how hard you push yourself. Yeah, that's right. Uh, get some resistance training in and get your protein where that needs to be. Just make sure your expectations are set at a realistic level. So that weight you can probably get rid of by the end of the season. Um, anything else on that one? No, I mean, it's, we've touched on all of these before in detail. Yeah. Um, so if you want to have a look back at our previous episodes, about six or seven, um, if, then we go in more detail with those. If you have a look, usually the episode title, it'll, um, it'll, have, it'll say a few things that we're going to be talking about. So if you're looking for something that's specific to, to whatever your particular case is, go back and have a look. We'll talk, if we're talking about counting calories or if we're talking about using the app or um, conditioning work or whatever it happens to be. Mm. Okay, uh, that's gonna do us for today. So please subscribe on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. If you've got a question, send them through via Instagram, Facebook. Put anonymous with it um, if, you don't want, if you don't want us to say your name, which is what most of them are these days. Please include as much detail as possible, you know, age, height, weight, the division that you're playing, how many years you've played, what kind of training you're doing at the moment. Um, give us as much detail as you can just so that our, our answers can be a little more specific and less generic. Um, but yeah, enjoy your footy. Talk soon.